Damon here with Fig Moon on Pens. Uh, to begin today, I had a little show and tell. Uh, I had recently seen on Reddit where someone had uh, posted a custom Rubik's Cube that they had made with pictures of ink swatches. Uh, there's a company out of Greece called V-Cube that they used, and I thought it looked cool, so I ordered a custom cube for myself. Now, I have no association with this company at all, and I'm not going to link to their site, but they're pretty easy to find if you want to track them down. Um, and this is what I received. What I did was I used pictures from some of my reviews and wanted to get ones that had some color in them. Uh, and so, like right here, is the red feed from a Wall Eversharp Deco Band. And then here is the blue cap from the Canalia Nui Nalu. And uh, the finial from the Pelican Kyoko. And then there is the, uh, the cap and the snake from the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir. Then I have a nib from uh, Danny Trio Genkai. Uh, and then there's the, the brown barrel from the Classic Pens LB5. And that side really didn't turn out that well. Uh, but I really impressed with the quality of the cube. It has some really good action. Uh, and the printing on the, the it's actually printed on here. It's not stickers. Uh, and it's really a, a, f a fantastic quality. I really like that. Uh, I might need to get another one down the line with some different pictures. But um, uh, but if you see this in the background, then that's what it is, is my uh, picture cube that I had made. So enough with show and tell. Uh, the pen I have for you today is the Conklin Duragraph. Um, what I'm going to do is go over some of the parts and the features of the pen, talk about what I care about and uh, some of the things I don't care for, show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, Conklin is an American company established in 1898 by its founder, Roy Conklin. Uh, Roy is credited with creating one of the fir world's first self-filling fountain pens, uh, called the Crescent Filler. And the company was very successful during the golden age of fountain pens. In 1903, the author Mark Twain became an official spokesman for Conklin, uh, extolling the Crescent Filler as a profanity saver since it would not roll off of your desk. Uh, the Duragraph was actually introduced in 1923, uh, and the name is a combination of the words durable and graph. Uh, the company uh, eventually ceased operations in 1948, but was revived in the early 2000s, and now they produce uh, modern versions of the company's most successful models. And the model I have for you today uh, is the Conklin Duragraph. Uh, this pen was uh, generously provided to me by Ron at Pen Chalet for review and to give away. So stay tuned at the end of the review and I will let you know how you can win this very pen that you are about to see. Uh, the pen arrives in this sleeve and in this box. Uh, you know, the box is a little different and I like it. it it's kind of a blue leather-like material uh, with some nice contra contrasting gold stitching uh, and the Conklin logo embossed on the top. Uh, inside we have some uh, very soft suede-like material um, and then we also have a, a warranty card and then just some uh, general instructions. Then it has a couple of cartridges, uh, one blue and one black, standard international cartridge. And then here is the pen, the Conklin Duragraph. This is the, uh, the amber finish. Uh, this pen is made from a, a semi-transparent acrylic and has some chrome accents. So let's go ahead and start at the cap. Um, the end of the cap is flat and black and has the Conklin logo printed right on it. Uh, it's not engraved or anything like that. And then below it says established in 1898. Uh, then we have a, a thin chrome band which transitions into the clip. Um, it's a clip that kind of tapers down to a bit of a teardrop shape at the end. Um, it is a bit on the tight side, uh, but it is still functional. Uh, and you know, I can't say it's my favorite clip design, but I do like it more than some of Conklin's other clips. Um, here's another Conklin pen. Uh, this is the uh, the herringbone which I own uh, and this was my my first venture into pens of color but you can see here on the Con the Conklin logo is on the clip which in my opinion doesn't look too great. Um, so I'm glad that they did not do that with this Duragraph. Um, the cap is straight and then we have a rounded cap band. On the uh, clip side of the band it says Conklin and on the back side it says Duragraph and has three crescent shapes on either side facing away from the name. 
Um, there is a rounded step down to the barrel, which is straight. Uh, and then we have another rounded band and then a black piece here at the end, uh, which is flat. Uh, the acrylic used here is, I'll call it semi-translucent. Uh, so you can see a bit of what is going on inside the pen. Uh, but by no means would I call this a demonstrator. The amber acrylic really does have some nice swirling and, and a bit of chatoyance when you hold it up to the light. So uh, it, it is very nice material. I like it. Uh, the cap twists off to reveal this two-tone steel nib. Uh, the nib is stamped with the Conklin logo, as well as Toledo, USA. You know, I, I like the crescent shape breather hole, which is just a little bit different, uh, which is what most Conklin pens have. But I wish it kind of mirrored the exact shape of the crescents on the cap, uh, uh, or the cap band, rather. Uh, I just think it would be nice if the exact shape uh, was used in mul multiple places on the pen. Uh, this is a medium nib, uh, but it is also available in fine as well as a stub. And then here's the plastic feed. The section has a little flare at the end and then transitions up uh, to the threads and a very small step up to the barrel. Um, the plastic section is on the, the small side of medium, uh, but it is very comfortable. Uh, and the pen is long enough to use unposted. Um, you can post this pen and it does post secure, but it really doesn't post that uh, deeply and adds a considerable length to this pen. And I really find that it kind of backweights this pen too much for my taste. So I typically use it without posting. Um, as you might have noticed in the advertisements, the original version of the Durgraph was a lever filler. Uh, the modern version is a cartridge converter. Um, it does take uh, standard international cartridges as well as a converter. Now, um, it, a threaded converter does uh, come with this pen and is included. Uh, this pen sells on Pen Chalet's site for $44, which I feel is a reasonable price for this pen. For that price, you get a, a decent looking pen that, would, that uh, would be very functional as a daily writer. And as you'll see in the writing sample, uh, the nib is, is workmanlike. You know, it's not spectacular, but it gets the job done and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'll put a link to where you can find this pen on Pen Chalet's, pen Chalet's sites in the notes below. Um, and if you would care to pay a little less for this pen or anything else on Pen Chalet's site, site just use the code FIGBOOT for an additional 10% off of your entire order. Uh, and this code will be good through the end of the year, 2016. Uh, and as I said, it's good site-wide, not just for this specific pen. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the review, you can win this pen courtesy of Pen Chalet. Um, all you need to do is leave a comment here on YouTube to be entered into the drawing. Um, today is Saturday, November 12th, uh, 2016. Uh, sometime after midnight on Tuesday, November 15th, I'll randomly select a winner from those that comment. Um, to win this very nice pen, and I like this one a lot. Uh, in regard to a comment topic, um, you know, how about some Q&A questions? Uh, it's not a requirement to enter, just a suggestion. But I was considering doing a Q&A, and if I get some interesting questions, then I'll uh, potentially put one together in the very near future. But like I said, that's not a requirement. Just leave, a com just leave any comment and you will be entered. So now it is time to uh, show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then a writing sample for this pen. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Conklin Duragraph. You know, I do really like this amber finish. It kind of looks a little more expensive than it, the pen really is, which is uh, nice to have. But here it is with a Lamy Safari. Then here it is with a Nemesine Singularity. And then here it is with a new acquisition, which is a Pilot Vanishing Point Black and White, uh, or as it's more commonly known, the Stormtrooper. Uh, that's not technically the name for it, but it's just what people call it. Uh, we have a pen club in the uh, in the Triangle area, which meets once a month, and the meeting this past week was focused on Japanese pens. You know, a lot of folks brought pens to share, but my friend David has one of the best Vanishing Point collections you'll ever see, uh, and he brought some samples of every Vanishing Point nib available, as well as some custom grinds. And I hadn't had a chance to try out one of the stub nibs before, uh, and I really liked it, and so it uh, it 
I had been really eyeing this pen, but uh, but uh, had decided not to because I, I decided I really didn't need one. But then uh, I, I justified it by picking it up with a stub nib, uh, which I do like a lot. So uh, if you do have a pen club in your area, I'd highly recommend uh, checking it out. It's a great way to learn from others and share your collection as well as get exposed to things that you might not have seen otherwise. And in comparison to some other items, uh, here we have a uh, Visconti Divina. Then we have a Pelican M805. Uh, and then finally, we have a Classic Pens LB5. So here we have the Conklin Durograph. And this is a medium steel nib. And the ink I'm using today is Conway Stewart. King Sand. This is what it looks like. Uh, that uh, it is a, a rather sandy brown, so to speak. Uh, here it is in comparison to like the, uh, the Bung Box Piano Mahogany, which is more of a reddish brown, uh, or even the, the Hazelnut, Faber-Castell's Hazelnut Brown, which is a bit deeper. Uh, it does come in uh, this bottle, and I do like these uh, Conway Stewart bottles, uh, that I think it protects the ink well, and then plus it's a nice uh, deep bottle that it's easy to fill from, so I like these bottles. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Now, this is a, uh, a steel nib, uh, and so you're not going to get tons of flex from it, but if you push it, you can get a little bit of line variation, uh, that it's a little bit on the flexible side, so you can get a bit of variation out of there. Um, that it has a decent amount of ink flow, and so it's a decently wet pen. And in regard to reverse writing, it's kind of touch and go, but it is possible. And in regard to some fast writing, it did have a little issue there, but I think that was more the angle that I was writing at, so I think that was more my issue. So here you have the Conklin Durograph. Um, you know, it's a really decent pen. Uh, it looks nice, it writes well, and it's available for a reasonable price. And if you use the discount code, uh, then it's even a more reasonable price. So there's a lot to like about this pen. Uh, thanks again to Ron at Pen Chalet. Uh, don't forget to use the code FIGBOOT between now and the end of the year for 10% off of your entire order. Uh, Ron's been very supportive of my channel, and I really appreciate it. Uh, Fountain Pen Day was this past week, and I made my annual special purchase from Pen Chalet. Uh, so it's definitely something that I'll be sharing down the line. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.